Good afternoon, potato chips. How are you doing? We parry from across a shock and another wee video for you today. And this is a, a, a different sort of a video because this is about five knives I didn't think would be part of my collection. Based on the little knowledge I had when I came into the community and the try before you buy theory can be proved wrong and buying cheap before you buy can be proved wrong. Um, there's some there's some areas in the knife sort of general sort of parlance that we speak that are not necessarily right. And this is one of them things, whereas I've chose five knives that I didn't think I would have in the collection based on looks, based on what they felt like in hand because I had bought cheaper versions um, and just time and realising that there is maybe a brand that will make that knife attractive to you. And I think that's the, the thing that it is, because brands, it, it, like the nice thing about the traditional knives especially, now I have a locking knife in here as well, but there's a, a nice thing about the traditionals, there's so many brands out there. Now, a lot of them are older ones, and if you're not into that older generation and trying to collect them, you'll miss out this being one of them. Um, and I'll just, I'll go through and I'll just talk you through the knives. I always thought Mother of Pearl was for old men. Strangely enough, I'm an old man now. <laughs> Once you're over 60, Mother of Pearl must become attractive because this is just beautiful. And I've only recently got this. I didn't really have, I've one very old Mother of Pearl knife, but the Mother of Pearl's done on it, to be honest with you. But this is just beautiful. Now, oh, God, you can hear the snap on that. This is an older knife. This is a, a fighting rooster. You can see the beautiful etch on it. Fighting rooster do some great etches. But it's just beautiful. Lovely shaped. Really unusually shaped. And I think all them things have sort of added up to a beautiful knife. A really, really nice knife. I love it. So that was never going to be because I had tried the cheaper ones. I'd had uh, Rough Rider ones and had things like that, just cheaper models, and they'd done nothing for me. But when I seen this one, um, I just had to have it. It was just, and in hand, it is unusual, but it's great because it's a belly and it's down on the table. If you want to cut, you know, even your bit of meat for your dinner or whatever, this will definitely get down and make a lovely cut on it. Lovely upswept blade. Well, is it upswept? It is if you put it that way. You know, it is definitely upswept. But it's beautiful. It has a swedge across the top here, which is probably not coming out, but it has a beautiful swedge across, just across the top of it there which makes it just very attractive. So there's the first one that I didn't think I would have, and this will not be leaving. I, ju I just love this. It wasn't an expensive knife, but it's really lovely, and it's a nice example that I can use of other mother of pearl. The doctor's knives. Now, I didn't think I would ever like them because I'm not a person for tall, skinny blades. And now, I have... Trying to think of the make of the one that I have in the house. I haven't got it here with me, strange enough. But it was the one that broke the mould. I think it was Rough Rider. I think it was Rough Rider or Marbles came out with a doctor's knife and I thought it was beautiful. And I got it. And then I got this one recently, which is a Remington. And this is a made in the USA Remington doctor's knife. Really nicely made. It has a squared off bottom for pill crushing. I would have rather have seen an end cap there. I don't know why there isn't or why there wasn't. Maybe this is not what would be counted as a doctor's knife. Just a long, slim knife. But it's so well made. It is nice in the hand. There's no wobble. On the, a lot of the cheaper knives, like the Rough Riders, and things, which are brilliant, and they let you see patterns that, that you, you've never seen before and try them and see if you like them. But this... It seems to be in a different level. It is solid, completely solid. The blade is quite sturdy. It's not an ultra fine tip, but it's just a nice little knife that you can use for anything. It's not huge. It's a handle length of 
three and three quarters and a blade length of three inches exactly. So it's even UK legal, but yet it looks long, pointy and stabby. But it's great if you want to get into narrow spaces as well as, you know, whatever a doctor would do. But you could use it for pill crushing. You could use the back of the knife here for sorting out your pills. And that's what they would have used the old knives for, to sort out their pills and uh, just make it easy for them. And they would have had a spatula. The other one I have has a spatula, which really makes it very nice. I really enjoy the fact that it, it has a spatula. But this is lovely. And the fact that it's a, an old American brand makes it even more collectible for me. Now, here's the one that really did take a lot of turning for me. The toothpick. And I know Tobias loves them. But at the beginning, when I first got them, I'd got Rough Riders and a couple of other cheap, and they were flipping awful. Real skinny little blades that I know, look, there's lots of people like things that I don't like, and that doesn't make them bad things, but it was just a knife I didn't see the point of at all until I got my first GEC. And this is where, in one case, price and the company have made a knife that is perfect. It's much nicer to use than any other that I have used. So I don't want any of the other ones. I've got a couple of small, I've got a little case one, and it's a double blade. It's a little tiny, tiny. It's in my EDC today. Um, but look at the difference between this and the normal um, toothpicks. Just look at that blade. How much taller that blade is, it doesn't, it comes down to a narrow point, but again, it's not a, a delicate tip. It's got a good enough blade stock that this can do me as an EDC any day of the knife, any day of the knife, any day of the week. This here, beautiful bone, uh, which is camel bone dyed in this turquoise sort of colour, is just stunning. I love this. If you get up closer to it, you'll see how deep and rich that, that it's taken deep in the, inside the bone, which is just beautiful. Fit and finish as usual. Absolutely perfect. But that's a blade you could work with and do any task with. It's not that skinny little terrible end that always felt wobbly in the cheaper knives. Do you know? Oh, <laughs> hey! Oh, there's something. Is that? It is. I've got a bit of blade wobble on a GEC. Never had a bit of blade wobble. No, it, was, it must have just been locked up. That, look at that, that's solid now. Uh, anyway, I thought I had found a fault. But there's another one that it took me a while to like. And, and I still don't like the cheaper versions. But I do like this one. So it means that I've got this one at least that will stay in my collection. You know, to be a toothpick knife that I can get behind and like. I haven't found another. That's the only one I've really liked. The next was Slim Trappers. Are you getting a little bit of a uh, thing here? Long skinny blades on a slip joint I haven't liked. But I have managed to find different brands that have changed my mind. And here's this one. This is a Shatton Morgan. Look at the... This is wood. And it's stabilised. It's highly polished stabilized wood how beautiful a knife is this this just looks like you know it should come out of a tree it is absolutely stunning looking i love it triple ring bolster at the or double ring bolster at the top i should say just beautiful and just an end cap all stainless steel by the looks of it brass liners but uh and that's uh I'm not sure. I don't think that's stainless steel. It is nickel silver, I would say, because it's starting to dull. But this looks stainless, strangely enough. But there we go. This is a beautiful knife. And this is a long, slim blade. But how beautiful it's done. And it looks delicate up here until you turn it to the side. You see it's been swedged at the top here. But leaving that corner that gives you a really nice tip that can do most tasks. It's beautifully solid, no wallop, wobble. But the thing that encouraged me to get it was it was one of 30. There you are, you can see that on there. Shatton Morgan. So to have only 30 of these in the world, 
I think is brilliant. Shot and Morgan Shield, to be quite honest, I've had so many Shot and Morgans now where the shields are atrocious. They just about get away with that one. It's not very even, but the rest of the knife brings it up, lifts it up, but that wood on it is just stunning. I love it. Really do love it. Gorgeous in hand. Really, really nice. And this was made by Queen. There we go. Can you see that? Yeah, I think you should be able to see that. This is made. That's the Queen DFC on it. But made in Titusville. I absolutely, I just love it now. It is one of the Slim Trapper. And it's the only one I like. I've got the Case Trapper, Slim Trapper. I have to be honest with you, I don't like them. That is the only one I like. And there's one, two, three. I'll probably find other Mother of Pearl that I would like. but And I'll probably find another um, Doctor's Knife, in fact, I have, that I like. I'll show you that some other time when I've got it down in the collection here. Um, toothpick and Slim Trapper. I haven't found another one that I like in these. These are two perfect examples for me. That makes me want to keep them in my... I've so often, these are sort of some of the knives that... All right, I've only got one off them, so I could lose them and not lose too much. But to me, the patterns are too important to take out of my collection, if that makes any sense. I like to have, even the patterns that I don't like, I like to have one off them, just so that I can compare or contrast. And this last one is going to... The Buck 110. It took me five years to buy it. I only bought it this year. I had other cheaper um, versions... But I also had other good buck knives that were at the same price range as this. I had the big, uh, I think it was the 278. It's the Hunter with the, the gut hook at the end of it and the rubber scales uh, and, and stainless steel uh, liners that showed. The rubber scales just covered them. I haven't got it down here, but I think it was the 278 or something. But it was a fantastic knife. I used it for fishing, bushcrafting, used it for everything. So... I never thought I needed to get this because I have that big buck there and it wasn't the things. Buck was not what I came into knife collecting for. They were useful working knives. Little did I know that further on down the line, that's the sort of knives that I really like. Knives that you can do something with. This is the Buck 55. I have the, the thumb stud on it for one hand opening. Beautiful lock up. Gorgeous blade. Hollow grind. 428C lasts a reasonable amount of time. Just a grafter. This one has the scalloped fingers, which again I wouldn't normally like in a knife, but oh my goodness, does this fit? And it will fit so many different sizes of hands. This is just delicious. It's so safe in your hand. You know, you can thrust with this and not worry about it. Now, gorgeous. This here, not only does it make for one hander open, but it makes for a ramp. And it really does settle you behind that blade for any, you know, poking tasks that you want to do. I just didn't think I would like it. And I absolutely love it. The Buck 110 is one of my favourite big knives. Heavy knives. But, it, you know, it goes in a pouch. It's not something I'm going to throw in my pocket. Or it'll go in a pack when I'm going. I don't do much camping now. But if I'm going out with the missus and I just want to... Even just the simple fact of making some curls up for a fire, I don't have to carry a fixed blade. I can take that with me and I can do multiple tasks and um, not scare too many people. So there you go. There's knives that I never thought I would get in my collection or I had tried and didn't like with other brands. And until I found the brands that done uh, and uh, uh, until I found a, a brand that actually done a uh, an iteration that I liked in that blade shape. I'm trying to get the words out there. I had to find the brand, and that's what the joy is, buy and sell and buy and sell. And if I hadn't started doing that, I wouldn't have these five knives, which are a beautiful part of my collection, and I want to keep. So, there you go. That's a wee bit serious today, wasn't I? A wee bit serious, but I love these knives now. And it's so nice to have them in the collection. And I don't have to get rid of them. Because I swapped and changed a lot to try and get these knives into the collection. Don't know why I never got that. I had a buck 55 and loved it as a small knife. Um, sold it to my friend not so long ago. But that was after I got the buck 110. So there you go. 
Right, Paddy's away, cup of tea time. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, they see this box? I was going to do the box opening. It's pathetic. I just done a quick look this morning to see what was in it. It's more of a little toolbox. It's got, uh, I'll maybe do it the weekend. I'll leave it like that and I'll maybe open it at the weekend. But it's not, I thought there was a bit of first aid and everything in there, which is a good reason to open the box. There isn't. So I haven't got first aid in this car. I need to make up another one. And I'll probably show me making up two different boxes, one for first aid and one for little tools and gadgets. And we'll do that one weekend. Maybe this weekend coming. You never know. Anyway, that's today's video. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye-bye now.